Hello all, my name is Krishnak and welcome to my YouTube channel. So guys, as promised in the new year, I told that I'll be uploading videos on competitive programming and every day at least one problem statement will try to solve. Now guys, you have to follow some steps whenever you are trying to solve this kind of problem. See, I can give you the problem statement, I can give you the answer. That is not how competitive programming works. Whenever I am giving you a problem statement, please take around 10 to 15 minutes. Take a rough paper, take pen and try to just write a pseudo code and see how you can actually implement this. That is the major, major thing, guys. It is not like, okay, you can Google and get a lot of solutions. But remember, those solutions, those logics should at least come from you. That is the main thing in competitive programming because tomorrow, Whenever you are going for an interview in product based company, the first thing over there, they will ask, they'll give you a problem statement and there you have to think about the logic. So how, what is the process that you should actually follow is that whenever I give you a problem statement, pause the video for five minutes. Okay. Read the problem statement properly. Try to give at least 10 to 15 minutes. Okay. See, you have to devote at least one hour. What I'm saying. Yes, there are some people who are very smart who can just do it in 10 minutes. That's fine. And the problem statement that I will be giving initially will be very, very easy. Later on, the difficulty will be increasing. So my plan is that within three to four months, we'll try to solve somewhere around 200, 300 problem statement. And this will be purely in Python. Okay, because I have a good command in Python. I also have good command in C sharp, but I would suggest to go with Python. And it's, it's fine with any programming language, you can do competitive programming. Because over there also, they'll give you multiple programming language to solve it. Okay. So this is the first problem statement. And again, happy new year. And we will try to do at least one problem a day. That is what I can at least promise. I'll try my level best to make it two. But yes, one problem statement so that and the problem statement will pretty be pretty much good. Here is the problem statement guys. So generate all the binary strings. Now this is a problem statement where if you say that I, if you give a value n is equal to two, then your binary strings, your binary numbers that is created is like zero, 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 one, one, zero, one, one. It should be in the same order guys. Suppose if you are giving n is equal to one, your answer should be zero or one. If you are giving n is equal to three, your binary number should start with triple zero, triple zero, uh, double zero, one, zero, one, zero, zero, one, 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 zero, zero, one, zero, zero, one, one, zero, one, one, one. Similarly with respect to this. So with respect to the n value, you should be able to generate all the binary strings. Now this is the first problem statement. Now, just think over it, how you will do it, how you will go ahead and do it. That is a major, major thing. Let me give you some of the hints. Whenever we see this kind of numbers that we are trying to generate, just imagine guys, you definitely will be using a lot of for loops. Now, when the first thing about for loops comes in your mind, always make sure that you have to use recursion. Okay. You need to know what is recursion, basic understanding of recursion. I'll try to solve this problem in front of you. And then I will also show you that how recursion will work into this. I'll try because see over here, you're generating strings. You're generating strings with some logic, right? When you're doing that, when you're generating those strings with some logic, that basically means you will basically be using a lot of for loops. So internally recursion is the best practice to use in this specific problem statement. This at least we have actually come to a conclusion. This is the main thing guys. Whenever you have something scenarios like this, make sure that you have recursion. Recursion has backtracking uh, problem statement within it, right? You have to solve it. Okay. Now this is the first thing. This is the first conclusion that you have come up with. Now let's think about the logic. Okay. Now, before that, I'll just give you five minutes. Just pause your video. I'm not pausing this video right now. So just pause the video, think over it for five sec five minutes and just try to think, write a rough paper, take a rough paper, write a numbers over there, try to write a pseudo code and try to see how you're going to solve it. Okay. Now in the next step, I'm going to solve the problem. So let's go ahead. So guys, uh, here is the entire code. The entire code is having two functions, which I have actually written over here. And this two functions will be able to generate this kind of number. So let's see, let's see. Suppose if I take uh, of three, so I'm getting all these particular numbers. If I'm taking of four, 
I'm going to uh, generate this particular numbers. Okay, this this is purely in Python. I'll make you understand this particular code. Don't worry. If I take five, uh, I will be able to solve this also. Okay, so it is working absolutely fine. If I take one, let's see whether it is working fine or not. Okay, every time I'm missing a bracket, uh, that should not happen. So one is also working. Right now, this is basically the code. In this code, I have used two function. One is generate bit, and the second one is append bits. Out of these two function, this is the recursive function that we are going to use. Because just see over here, I have used generate bit. In the else condition, I am again calling append bits. Append bit is this function, and internally after this, I am calling this generate bit. Now see how the execution will happen. In this example, I'm going to take the example of three, okay? Because the reason why I'm taking the example of three, because at least I'll be getting eight numbers. Now note one thing with respect to this particular output. Suppose if I take this n is equal to three, okay? Whenever you see the numbers with respect to binary string, always remember this will be an even number. Let's see, if I take n is equal to five, two to the power of five is nothing but 32, right? So like that, any time when you see over here, you'll be having even numbers of elements inside this. Okay, this is the one outcome that you will be finding. And the numbers or the, the strings that you'll be seeing, half of the numbers will be starting with zero. Okay, half of the numbers will be starting from zero. See, here you are, you're starting from zero, here also you're starting from zero, here also you're starting from zero, here also you're starting from zero. Then after that, you're starting from one. So you have one zero zero, one zero one, one one zero, one one one. Right? So half of the numbers will always start from zero and half of the numbers will always start one. So this particular problem statement you have at least understood. Now the main thing is that this half of the numbers you can write your own logic to basically append this particular values. This half of the numbers you can write your own logic to append this numbers. Now guys, this technique is only not the only technique guys. You can also use some other type of techniques where you divide the half of the number of elements. Like if I give n is equal to three, I know how many number of elements will be coming in case of binary, two to the power of three, eight. So I can divide eight, divide by two, half the numbers. I can write those kind of logic. But here I've given you a better logic with respect to recursion where, and always remember whatever logic you're trying to write, you always have to take care of the time complexity and space complexity. Again, I've discussed about time complexity and space complexity in my computer, uh, in my competitive programming playlist. Okay. So let's understand how, how we have solved this particular problem. Again, guys, this logic will just not be coming like that. You have to work for it. For me also, it, it, it was difficult, but I tried to see, I tried to write pseudocodes. I tried to understand some of the things and then I was able to write it out. Okay. Now, the first function generate bit in this, the first condition is that if n is equal to zero, I will discuss about this. If n is equal to zero, why we have returned empty. If n is equal to one, why we have returned zero one. Then in the else block, we have called append bits. Append bits is nothing but this function. Inside this, it takes two parameter. One is uh, uh, a value like this, like zero or one. And the second parameter is basically a list. Okay. In the case of list, I'm calling this particular function, which is called a generate bit. Generate bit with n minus one. So this will internally call generate underscore bit this particular function. Now see this, let's write this. Suppose if I give three, okay, suppose if I give three, so in the first case, my this and this will be called, right? Let, let me consider only this, okay? Let me just consider only this. So this will be called over here. And here I have given three. So three minus one will become two in the first case. Okay. In the first case, it will become two. Let me just close this. Okay. Now in the second step, what I'll do is that again, this generate bit will be calling its own function. See recursive, what happens in the recursive stage, the generate bit will again be called. So it's just like this guys. Let me just show you. So here is my example that I've taken here. It is recursive function. So my function generate bit is getting called. Okay, this generate bit internally calls an append function. Here my n is equal to three. Okay, this append function internally calls again a generate bit function. And here your n value is actually two. Okay, then again this generate bit will be internally called with an append and again a generate 
and here your n value will be 1 because every time we are doing n minus 1 see over here we are doing n minus 1 so in the first call we have called this okay I'm going to call this with n is equal to 3 with n is equal to 3 right then append bit is basically getting called over here okay and here you can see that generate bit n minus 1 is nothing but this now again internally this generate bit if i go and see again this append bit will be called this condition will not be true n is equal to 0 and n is equal to 1 because here your n is nothing but 2 okay your n is nothing but 2 see this is the parameter that is going so your n is nothing but 2 so in again my next function this will happen and again this will become n minus 1 so over here my n value will now be 1 over here guys remember your n value is 2 okay here your n value is 1 okay so this is how it is being called now again when the generate bit function is called over here now the value over here is 1 okay now if n is equal to 0 this condition is false if n is equal to 1 this condition will be true now when this condition is true it will return 0 comma 1 so this is basically going to return me a list of 0 comma 1 okay this is going to I'm just talking about this part guys don't worry I'm talking about this part okay now after this this append bits function will call and this append bits function what it is doing it is just concatenating with each and every element in the list so if I have 0 comma 1 right first of all it will do x concatenation element for element in L so 0 comma 0 0 0 will be one element okay and 0 1 will be the other element like this okay 0 1 will be the other element so that is what it is happening from this particular step right so this is the output that I am getting a list of a uh, list of concatenations over here so I'm just going to make this as concatenation again guys it will take some time to understand also if you are not following just try to execute this code okay so this is basically the output of this generate bit of 2 okay because that is internally calling over there right so the final output after this particular operation will look something like this where you'll be having three zeros and then you'll be having two ones two zeros and one ones now this was with respect to this left hand side guys so the final output after this uh, when we execute this append bits probably because this will get concatenated to every element that is present in the list I'll be getting triple zeros and double zero one now one thing that you have to take care guys try to do the right hand part of this because with this elements there will be a concatenation with whatever elements that is get, get, getting generated over here and just try to see whether you are able to get all the values or not the reason why I have taken I have taken n is equal to 3 is that because at least it will help me to understand with less number of recursion problem statements right now here I have shown you with respect to 3 I just went 3 steps above 3 steps below I was able to get this kind of output okay just try to see guys and uh, try to see whether you are able to get generate this numbers or not the main important thing about competitive programming is just not understanding this particular code instead it is understanding the logic like how it is getting generated this is the most important thing in competitive programming please make sure that you go through this and I want you all also to do it in somewhat different way I told you one of the way guys suppose if I take n is equal to 3 I know the number of elements that are present inside this list will be even if I give n is equal to 3 the number of elements will be 8 I can divide those into half like 4 4 elements this 4 elements will be generated with a different technique right because it is starting with 0 and this 2 will be generated with some other technique when it is getting started as 1 by that your time complexity may, may still decrease and just try to see you always need to think in such a way that always you should try to decrease the time complexity or space complexity but this is the entire problem statement I hope you liked it I'll see you all in the next video have a great day ahead thank you and all bye bye